discussion of uh, a Gothic theory on algebraic varieties and today I will define the notion of uh, algebraic representation that appears in the title of this series of talks. But uh, first I want to uh, just recall some basic notions of uh, ergodic theory, um, just to again set the things up. Uh, so I'll start with uh, defining what a Lebesgue space is. So this is not completely standard terminology, but I think it's becoming quite standard, so, but we nevertheless do it. Uh, so this is uh, a standard Borel space. Uh, equipped with uh, a measure class. So uh, spaces do not come alone, they come with uh, the proper a uh, class of uh, morphisms between them, so let me elaborate on this. But before this, uh, let me explain what uh, a map is between a, a, a Lebesgue space, which typically I will denote x or y or z, and a, a standard Borel space, or a Borel space, which I will call u. So if x is a Lebesgue space, and now u will be a, a a Borel space, typically standard Borel space. By a map uh, from x to u, uh, I will uh, regard uh, an equivalent, equivalence class of Borel functions. Uh, from x to u, uh, define almost everywhere, and the equivalence is again is up to almost everywhere equality. Um, the space of all maps, I will denote either maps xu or sometimes lxu. Those notations are standard. So again, these are, as usual, uh, spaces of uh, equivalence classes. Uh, and of course, if u is the real or it's, it has a field structure, then this becomes a, a vector space, in fact, an algebra. Uh, in general, uh, not, uh, but maybe let me mention that if x is a specific measure, then this becomes uh, sometimes a metric space because I can integrate uh, the metric, uh, uh, the difference it says between functions. Oh, typically, if x is a finite measure and u is a, a bounded diameter, then I can integrate uh, the distance between images of maps and get a, a metric on this. This will become useful uh, shortly. Uh, and now morphism, or simply a map uh, of Lebesgue spaces, uh, is a map uh, between the underlying or is a, the Borel spaces which preserves uh, the measure class. So uh, if I have uh, x to y, and here I have the measure mu, uh, and here I have phi, then, uh, and here I have the measure nu, 
then, oh my God, sorry, x comma mu, y comma nu, then demand for this to be a morphism is that uh, phi star mu is equivalent to nu. <coughs> Uh, now we study group actions, so we should, again, uh, typically for locally compact groups, I will denote, uh, I will use it, S or T, G and H are preserved for uh, algebraic groups. So not to be confused, gamma usually is a lattice in an, an algebraic group. Uh, S, uh, locally compact second countable group. then S has a, a standard Borel space. Structure. That's actually holds for any Polish group. Uh, and a Lebesgue space. Uh, structure. Uh, because it has the Haar measure. Um, in fact, such groups are, maybe you can think of them as group object in the category of Borel spaces, but uh, you should notice that there are in the category of Lebesgue spaces there are no uh, group objects. There is no meaning for having an identity, for example. Points are not visible. Uh, nevertheless, I can uh, talk about actions, and this is what I'll do. Uh, and S Lebesgue space, X is a space endowed with an action, uh, uh, so is, is a Lebesgue space so with what, homomorphism. such that the map S times X to X, the action map, is a morphism. It's a quality, yes. It is, it is, it is written in a quality, yes. Uh, if you erase the brackets, you can write down equivalence if you wish. Uh, and just uh, to remind, uh, S acts on X, that's a symbol for action, uh, is ergodic. If, and I gave you several equivalent definitions last time, uh, they still hold. Uh, one of them is every uh, S invariant map uh, X to U uh, is essentially constant uh, for every standard Borel space U. That's the usual ergodicity. And now I want to discuss, it will be important for us to have a, a more a, a stronger properties of, a, of ergodicity. So uh, let me discuss several of them. So we'll fix an action. And I'm defining several properties. It, it is called uh, doubly ergodic if the action of S is, if the diagonal action of S on X times X uh, is ergodic.
maybe I'll mention, uh, maybe I say something ab about it already. Uh, you should note in the category of Lebesgue spaces, unlike the category of Borel spaces or others, uh, there is no product, no categorical product. Still, we all know what uh, the product of spaces and product measures are. <coughs> Uh, that's one uh, definition. The action is called metrically ergodic. Uh, if, uh, now comes a bunch of parameters. Uh, if for every isometric action, of S on U, uh, U a separable metric space. Usually I can assume it to be also complete, so it is a Polish space, but the metric structure now is not implicit. It is uh, uh, important if for any isometric action of S, uh, comma, every uh, map, every S equivalent. I will just write in the future S map, S equivalent map. Uh, X to U is constant. Constant means essentially constant by our definition of a map. Uh, constant and image that follows is S fixed. The essential image, which is a point, is S fixed. That's metrically ergodic. Um, is the definition clear? The action is called weakly mixing. If for any ergodic PMP action. Uh, PMP. PMP means probability, probability measure. Preserving. Now, a measure, not a class. Uh, in our discussion of Lebesgue spaces, uh, we have measure classes. Sometimes, in the class given on the Lebesgue space, there exists uh, an actually invariant measure. Maybe a finite measure, then I can always normalize it to be uh, of total mass one, then it is a probability measure. And, and this is a property of a, of a Lebesgue action. Uh, the, the existence of such thing. Then if, if we have such, we call the action PNP. And typically if the action is ergodic, by the way, uh, then this uh, probability, the invariant probability measure will be unique because any two in the same class will be equivalent and the radoni uh, derivative of uh, one with respect to another, both being invariant, will be an invariant function into the reals, uh, but such a function must be constant. And uh, this over a probability space, the integral of this constant must be one because both are a probability. So the constant must be one. So these are the same. So this is just a remark. So uh, ergodic PMP action is some special uh, type of, uh, of ergodic actions in our consideration. So an action, a Lebesgue action is called weakly mixing. If for every another action, uh, the diagonal action on x times y uh, is ergodic. <coughs> and uh, lastly, for, uh, okay, that's, uh, this name is maybe stupid, has no compact factors. The action has no compact factors <coughs> uh, if 
for every. continuous homomorphism uh, into a compact group um, for any agent K closed compact subgroup K mod H then could be equipped with uh, the Haar measure which is an invariant measure here under the K action but now through this uh, uh, homomorphism I have an S action on, on K mod H uh, for every map X to K mod H this is the compact factor of X uh, and now this is, uh, I guess my notation doesn't show it explicitly, but it, it, it's clear from context. This should be a quotient map when this is with the Haar measure. Uh, we have that H is K. That is, this is just a single point. So, you see, there, is no, there are no compact factors. That's the property. So such a thing will be a compact factor of X. And the property is that we cannot find such uh, in a non-trivial manner. So, well, uh, don't uh, claim. This property of this uh, chain of uh, implications, uh, I will uh, explain this. This is, this is very easy. I will do it very, very brief briefly. Uh, but it is nice and uh, it's a w way for us to uh, practice the definitions. Uh, so let, let me briefly explain one implies two. So I have a doubly ergodic action. I want to show that it is metrically ergodic. Or maybe before, uh, maybe before me proving, sorry, uh, I, I will make a remark. If X has any of the above, S by A, by this I mean an action, any of the above, Y is a factor of X, by this I mean uh, there exists S map, no, S morphism. Uh, of the big spaces, of the big actions like that, uh, then Y has this property. Uh, the same property. That's easy to see. <coughs> and now uh, I'll discuss one implies two. Uh, first ob observe X is not countable. Because, uh, is there a question, Greg? No, the map has to be dominant here for. Uh, so it's dominant, uh, this is more or less by definition of, of a map for us, uh, a map uh, preserve the measure class. So the measure class on Y uh, is the same as the measure class on, on X, so uh, you may call this uh, dominant. I mean, all maps are, uh, have this property by definition. So you, you don't see points in Y which are not in the image of X. Thank you. So first I want to observe that X cannot be uh, countable. Uh, otherwise, then if it was countable, the, the measure would be atomic. Otherwise, uh, the diagonal in X times X uh, is an invariant subset where if X is not a single point, it is not everything and not null. Now, the, the measure is atomic, so everything is seen by the measure if X is countable. Uh, invariant subset, hence 
x is a singleton. Um, so this is uh, also x has no countable factors by this remark. Uh, and so now I'm ready to prove one implies two. Uh, if I have a doubly ergodic x, it's not countable, then I, I I'm, I'm sketching things. I will not write everything up. Uh, you uh, tell me if this is too much for you. Uh, now, I'm assuming, uh, without writing, that uh, I have uh, such a metric uh, map, such a map from x into an isometric action u, uh, while x is being uh, double ergodic. Then I can take the double of the map, x times x to u times u. And here, I have uh, the metric, which is defined. And it is assumed to be invariant. So this map uh, is invariant. Hence, constant by ergodicity of the action of x on x times x. And because here there is no action, this map is S invariant. Um, so constant, uh, let's call it alpha, the constant. You know x has countable factors, you know it has... Excuse me? You know x has no countable factors? Ah, uh, so maybe the... Yeah, in the sentence, you missed uh, just before the line. Yes. No, it's a... No, we think one, maybe. Also, x has... No countable I, I, I was here, I didn't, yeah. uh, thank you. Uh, this will come useful in a second. Uh, okay, now I'm assuming x is doubly ergodic and x has a map to u, which is an isometric action. And I claim that for every pair of points in x, or almost every, I mean, you have to deal with this if you want to write down the proof uh, properly, but uh, for almost every uh, pair of points in x, the distance between these points is alpha. Now, there are two options. If alpha is 0, then uh, this map x to, uh, to u is constant, and we are done. This is what we wanted to prove. If alpha is not 0, then the image of x is a discrete set. And here comes the assumption of uh, separability on u, uh, which implies uh, that it is countable. Which I argue, I already explained that uh, cannot be. So we are left with the first option. Alpha is 0 and the map is constant. That's 1 implies 2. Two implies three. Now I'm assuming having a, a metrically ergodic action, and I want to explain that it is weakly mixing. So ergodicity is stable for product with ergodic PMP actions. So uh, I'm, again, I will not write uh, all the, the words. I will just give you the, the brief of the idea. Uh, our enemy uh, for ergodicity is uh, having an S invariant uh, map uh, on X times Y. I want to show that this map is constant, this uh, element F. Uh, the thing is that uh, I can, uh, out of uh, little f, I can uh, cook another function, I will call it big F, uh, from X that, uh, to L infinity Y. This is Fubini. Uh, this map f at x is a function, so at y it will be fx comma y. Fubini tells me that I can do that. And uh, now this space is not separable. This, this is an issue. I, I, 
I should have emphasized that separability is an issue here in this uh, uh, business. Uh, this space is not separable, but be because I am assuming, and here this, is, this assumption is, uh, uh, is used, because, because I'm assuming the, the uh, measure is invariant on Y, this space is a subspace of L2Y. And now you see that I'm, I, I got myself an equivalent map from X into a separable metric space. Uh, so ME implies F is constant, uh, so it's something in L2Y, but moreover, it will be an S invariant, I, I think I put it in parentheses here, it will be an S invariant function uh, in L2Y, and a constant function uh, in the Y parameter. And this means, if you follow the definition, that F is constant. So we have proved that every S invariant function on the double, on, on X times Y, is constant, so we have a good history. As I told you, all, all the proof, I mean, all these properties, the implications are very easy to do and uh, just have to uh, follow the definitions. Um, so this is why I choose to, to give you uh, the proof and maybe waste time on that. Um, okay, now I want to prove four. Oh, I mean, I want to assume weekly mixing and to prove that there is no compact factor. If I had a compact factor, by this remark, I, I can actually assume that my x uh, can assume that x is k mod h itself. And, uh, and now uh, I will take y to be k with the Haar measure. And then I have x times y, or k mod h times k, I have a, a natural map to k mod h. Let's take a, uh, how should I write this map? Uh, maybe I'll take x comma k uh, to k inverse x. This map is k invariant. So unless k, and unless this space is just a point, I got myself uh, an invariant function uh, on x times y contradicting uh, ergodicity, which I'm assuming. That's weakly mixing. Uh, so this forces uh, k mod h to be a, a point, and h to be k. Okay, uh, so this is, uh, everything here holds uh, for every, uh, I mean, I proved the claim, all the implication holds for every uh, Lebesgue action, uh, but now I want to emphasize, or to study, uh, the case where X itself is PMP. If x, or if s on x, sorry, is p and p, then this is like more classical ergodic theory, and then it is well known that uh, uh, all these guys are the same. Uh, let me uh, prove this. I think. Three implies one is really very easy. Uh, just take y to be x. Now x could be stand as y by assumption, and if I take y to be x, I'm just getting double ergodicity, and this shows that one to three are, the, are all the same. I just need to show that four, which is implied by these, uh, also implied them all. So I will explain. Oh. 
obvious. I will write obvious. I don't know. Uh, I, I will now explain why 4 implies 2. Or maybe I will explain why not 2 implies not 4. So uh, I want to assume now that 2 is not satisfied. So I do have some u and some map which is not constant, x to u. And I want to explain that by this I'm getting also a compact factor. Basically, I will explain that if you have, if x is p and p, then I push the measure to u, and I have a p and p action on u itself, uh, and it is metric, then it must be a compact action. That's, that's the point. And this is basically, uh, I mean, I'm not sure how much I will do now and how much I will leave as an exercise. Let me see. Uh, so, without loss of generality, as I, as I said, um, U carries an ergodic uh, PMP measure. Just the measure that I push from X uh, and uh, can assume also, or maybe call it mu, uh, mu is fully supported. And u is complete. I can just complete it. <clears throat> I'll write it as an exercise. I will give you an int. Exercise. Now, um, I claim that uh, then u is compact. Why is u compact? Uh, hint. U is show that it is totally bounded. Given epsilon, uh, consider. So maybe I'll I'll choose a point. U in u. Um, and I will consider a, a maximal a set of disjoint balls uh, of the form SU, I think, in my note I wrote epsilon over 3 here. Uh, So take shifts, take the shifts of u under the under s. Um, remember that my measure is fully supported. So balls are all uh, open balls, all uh, all carry a, a positive measure, and it is the same measure if the if the balls are just uh, shifts of the same balls. So uh, this is some uh, this, these are balls of positive measure. So uh, I because my measure is bounded, I cannot have infinitely many of them. So uh, the size of such a set of disjoint balls of some positive measure is bounded by 1 over this measure. Uh, so I can uh, choose a maximal thing like that uh, and show that maybe S in some finite set inside S uh, show that uh, F uh, u is an epsilon net. That's the exercise. Uh, with this exercise, I will explain. I mean, then u is compact. And then. Uh, Marcella Scully tells me that, uh, that K, the isometry group 
of u is compact as well. And now I have, uh, I can consider the action of the isometric group on u, and this is the action of a compact group on a compact metric space. Uh, this is a Hausdorff space. Uh, so, uh, and this map is k invariant, so this map is constant. By ergodicity. So the k action on u is transitive. So basically u is, as I told you, a compact factor. Uh, and we are now assuming that there aren't any uh, compact factors, then u is trivial. Under all this reduction that I made means that uh, the original map I had, x to u, uh, is constant. Did you say that 4 implies a body? I mean, this shows it for uh, major covariant action. Excuse me? Did you say that 4 implies, I mean, you didn't say it, but is it true that uh, 4 implies the abolic? Uh, I guess I'm assuming ergodicity here. Thank you. Um, if S on X is ergodic plus, uh, Thank you, Francois. In, in all other uh, definition, uh, ergodicity is implied. Here, this is an extra to ergodicity. Yes, otherwise I can take a bunch of things with no compact factor and glue them together. Mm. Okay, I mean, I guess I can reformulate it in a way that this is not needed, but uh, nevertheless. Um, so um, we have all this uh, 1 implies 2 implies 3 implies four, implied 4, and uh, in case of a PMP action, then they're all equivalent, and classic, classically uh, one use the term weekly mixing in this case which we preserved for uh, this property, which is usual, the usual definition of weekly mixing. Um, and maybe also uh, this property could be thought of as uh, stably ergodic. Not only the action, I mean, if the action of S on X is ergodic, it doesn't mean that when I multiply by another ergodic action, it stays er ergodic. Uh, under weekly mixing assumption, uh, this is the case in the PMP category. Uh, <clears throat> okay. That's about that. And um, all this is uh, to emphasize uh, the role of uh, metric ergodicity, which uh, is important for us in the PMP and in the non-PMP uh, world. So uh, let me uh, now discuss metric ergodicity. Let me start by a non-example. If I map S to, to G and G acts on G mod K, uh, and actually G here, I mean I, I said that I, preser I preserve G to be uh, our algebraic group, but this is uh, in general. If K is a compact subgroup, of whatever uh, group, uh, locally compact group, then on G mod K I have a, an a G invariant metric structure. Uh, so uh, this uh, is not, uh, I mean, this is not ME. ME means metric ergodic. Uh, 
example, a very classical example is the, the action now uh, gamma countable, omega a probability space, no action. And now I'll take the action of gamma by shift on omega to the gamma. This is the classical Bernoulli action. Uh, this is a PMP action. I take the product measure on, I mean, this is omega times omega times omega, uh, component indexed by uh, the group gamma, and the action of gamma is by shifting the, the indices. Uh, it is well known to be ergodic action. In fact, much more, it is a mixing action. In particular, I claim that it is weakly mixing. Let me explain why is it doubly ergodic. Uh, this is very, very simple. Omega to the gamma. Uh, sometimes I use, by the way, a power to the gamma to say fixed point. Here it's maps from gamma to omega. Sorry for this. This is standard uh, uh, ambivalence that we all use. Uh, x times x is the same by the rules that we learned in high school uh, uh, to uh, omega times omega to gamma. And again, this is some probability uh, space to the power of gamma, so this is ergodic. Uh, so this shows that this is ergodic, and this is a weakly mixing thing. Uh, so this is an example. Uh, but the typical uh, class of example that I will uh, work with, let me keep this one, uh, is the, f now I want to discuss, to go back and to discuss algebraic groups. Moreover, classical ones. So now let me uh, go back and assume uh, that G is non compact K simple. Algebraic. I want to have this assumption and to discuss uh, metric ergodicity in this con context and uh, to make the following claim. Ah, uh, also, sorry, I will fix a lattice inside G and another non-compact closed subgroup. And the following claim will be important for us, uh, both the action of gamma on G mod H and the action of H on G mod gamma are ME. The reasons are uh, somewhat similar, but not, not entirely uh, the same. So let me uh, explain uh, why this. I will, not, I will not prove it for you. But uh, this, this is uh, very classical. Uh, it, it fall, I mean, the fact that here, this is a PMP action. So here we are in the, in the realm of a classical ergodic theory, or more classical ergodic theory. And, uh, and this action is actually mixing. I, I decided not to, di to uh, discuss mixing here, but I guess most of us know. Uh, for most of us, this is anyway uh, just a, a repetition. But uh, nevertheless, I mean, there is a theorem by how more that says that uh, G, if G act on X, uh, P and P, then uh, this action is mixing. Again, I will not give the definition, but mixing is something uh, which is defined usually using unitary representation. It's, it implies ergodicity, and it's stable under product. Product of mixing uh, actions is again mixing. In particular, product of ergodic ones is ergodic. Uh, so, uh, Aumur theorem tells me that every action 
uh, of G, every P and P action is weakly mixing. And also, uh, I should have said, weakly mixing all, sorry, mixing also passes to non-compact subgroups. If G act mixingly and H is non-compact, then H act mixingly. So this shows that uh, this action is mixing and weakly mixing. Uh, so uh, in particular, since everything is PMP, it is ME. One implies two implies three implies four, or equivalent. Uh, so this is supposed to explain this. Again, I, I did not give the proof, but I'm promising you that this is very classical. And this is, uh, uh, this follows from two facts. First, the action of G on G mod H is ME. Um, okay, this is somewhat less classical. Uh, this is not PMP action. Uh, I mean, it could have been proved by uh, uh, How and Moore uh, because it follows the same uh, method. Uh, but the reference uh, to this is uh, a paper I, I have with uh, Zachary Gelander. It's using the same uh, kind of idea. Uh, but also, uh, and another thing that uh, is a general fact, if uh, maybe I'll go back to uh, uh, neutral uh, letters. Uh, if S act on X, ME, and gamma is a lattice, then uh, also the action of gamma on X is ME. That's a general claim. Uh, maybe I'll uh, explain this in one line. Uh, oh, but obviously, you see that blue and red here implies the white. Uh, mm, maybe I'll very, very briefly explain. Uh, assume, so here in red, I intend to explain the, the claim I made in red. Uh, if x is u uh, is a gamma map, uh, I'll give context. Uh, x is an S space now, and it is SME. I want to show it is gamma ME, so I'm taking a gamma metric space u and I'm considering a gamma map uh, to gamma metric space. Let's call it phi. Then uh, it's easy to arrange a, a map from x to maps from S to U, which are gamma equivalent. Uh, now, by as follow, big phi of X at S is phi of S X. And now I will not write any uh, further word. I will just uh, say, I mean, okay, you should check that this map here. Uh, that the image of X are gamma equivalent map. With respect to what? To the conjugation, uh, I mean to the gamma action on the left on S and uh, on U. Moreover, this map is S, invar S equivalent with respect to the action on X and the right action of S on S. I will, I will not check it for you, but uh, I mean, there are two actions of, uh, two side actions of, on S, so, so you, you should check it. Uh, so this is, a, this is a G map, oh, S map, sorry. Here I have an S structure. Uh, when I look at maps from S to U, I forget the S structure because I don't have on U, and I have just gamma structure on the other side, and I'm talking about the with respect to this one. Um, and now, on this guy, we do have an invariant metric, because basically, as I, I think I mentioned, I can assume, I can always assume that uh, the metric on U is bounded. Just change the metric, force a bound one on the metric, as usual. Um, I do it for the sake of integration uh, in, in, in a minute, but it doesn't matter any of the fine structure. It doesn't, 
change uh, invariance uh, of the metric by gamma. Uh, so I assume it is bounded. And now I can uh, integrate uh, the difference between two maps on the fundamental domain of gamma. Uh, and this gives me an invariant metric. And, uh, or if you wish, the, if I take two maps from S to U uh, and I take the difference, this difference is gamma invariant on S. So it is defined on S mod gamma. Uh, so D alpha beta, if alpha and beta are mapped from S to U, uh, D alpha beta uh, is a map from S to zero infinity. So I'm taking the images in U and then I apply the distance and this is invariant under gamma so I can integrate uh, over this space and define a metric on this one. And by S uh, Me, uh, this should be constant and, so you gain, and you read what it means, you, you gain the, the, the fact that uh, it is, I mean the original map phi is gamma constant. Okay, sorry for uh, being brief. Uh, but this is not possible to use verity, and you have <coughs> you have the blue thing that uh, H is uh, <coughs> mixing even on G over gamma. So does that mean that gamma cross H for the right and left action is uh, metrically ergodic on S? That gamma. You, you have the action of gamma cross H. Gamma cross age on? On G. Yes. And this uh, one is metrically ergodic because uh, looking at H, but looking at gamma, it gives you the other one. Uh, this is correct. I mean, you can make it a proof, but it, it's also, it, 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 it is basically the same proof. It, it requires some words. Uh, yeah, maybe it's a, it's a better explanation. Uh, okay. How uh, am I in time? Maybe now uh, I will give a... So, so far, all this was a discussion uh, of, uh, of uh, ergodic theoretical uh, facts and properties. Uh, ah, no, uh, sorry. I have now uh, yet another property that I want to discuss. Uh, before moving further, I'll do it before the break. I will discuss very briefly the property of amenability just to have it on the board so I can use it uh, later on. Again, I'm in the context of uh, an action of a locally compact group on a big space, X, and I want to define its amenability. There are many uh, equivalent definition, we all know this. There are many equivalent definitions for a group to be amenable, and this is some sort of a generalization of this. Uh, what we discussed is uh, sometimes called Zimmer amenability. I will give uh, a somewhat different uh, formulation just to have it on the board, and then I will move on uh, to a consequence. So uh, here is the formulation. If there exists an uh, S equivariant conditional ex conditional expectation from L infinity S times X to L infinity X. I will not explain this. Uh, I mean, you might know it well. Uh, you might know a uh, other definition. I will uh, emphasize a corollary uh, that sometimes people call baby amenability, which is the thing which is it's almost equivalent. Uh, and this is what uh, count for us uh, for every that's is going to be a fixed point property uh, for every compact convex 
S space. So I'm having here uh, C, which is a subset of a topological vector space, uh, locally convex uh, topological vector space, uh, on which S acts uh, linearly, and C preserves the C, and, so, and C is convex and compact for the topology. Typically, uh, C will be uh, some a subset, uh, some convex subset of the unit ball in a dual space or something, uh, or maybe weakly compact uh, subset of a Banach space, etc., etc. Uh, but we have the category of such things, uh, and this is just the thing I'm quantifying over. Uh, for every such, there exists an S map. So I, now I consider this as a Borel space. I forget uh, all the fine structure. And I'm just thinking, asking myself if I can map x, uh, x in it, and so this non-emptiness of the set is 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 amenability, or is a version of amenability, implied by uh, the classical uh, amenability. I'll give a bunch of examples and we'll uh, go to break. And after the break, we will go back to discuss uh, algebraic representations using these uh, notions and terms that we discussed. So examples. The action of S on itself, left regular action, uh, is amenable. Moreover, the action of S on S mod H is amenable if uh, H is amenable. I mean, this is the... Uh, special case where H is trivial. Uh, I mean, you see, uh, with this notion, I mean, I don't care much about the notation up there. Uh, it doesn't uh, of interest for us, but uh, this is very uh, easy to achieve. Uh, if, S act on if S is the action of S on itself, just pick any point in C and take the orbit map. If H is amenable, and we have an S action on C, just consider the H action on C, and uh, amenability implies an H fixed point, take the orbit map of this H fixed point and gain a map from S mod H in an S equivalent manner. Uh, so th these are the basic examples. Uh, and also, maybe I should say, also uh, for T in S closed if I restrict the action to T, uh, this is amenable. I mean, this is a general fact, not just about uh, this. If you restrict an amenable action to a closed subgroup, it stays amenable. Mm, here's a fact which is very important for us. For every locally compact second countable group S, there exists X, which is both amenable and ME, and metrically ergodic. I don't want to go uh, into the theory, but uh, a way to construct such a, a space is using what uh, is called uh, the notion of Firstberg Poisson uh, boundary. Uh, Firstberg Poisson boundary will, will have these uh, properties, and in fact, uh, a bit more. Uh, but specifically, I mean, this is, this is true in general, but uh, for classical groups, if I combine this remark here, with that remark there, 
I'm getting uh, some extra. I mean, this can never be amenable if gamma is a lattice in a classical group. Gamma is not amenable. But this guy could if H is amenable. And this is what I'm writing now. Example, for G as mm, there. No, here. Gamma lattice, H amenable but non compact, closed, of course. Then this specific action is as is two nice, somewhat complementary uh, property, amenability and ME. This is very important for us. This is, I mean, this fact give uh, some unknown space one can play with. This gives me th that space or such a space in a very concrete way in examples I care for. So uh, this, is, this is all very, very useful. That's enough about uh, ergodic theory uh, per se for today. And uh, after the break, we'll take now a break. Uh, and after the break, we'll go back to uh, actions on, uh, on varieties. Thank you. And, and now uh, we are approaching the, the heart of this course. And, and this is the definition of uh, area, algebraic representation of ergodic action. Uh, so now uh, I fix. S, again, L, LCLC uh, group. And still fixed uh, L bag action. Moreover, I fix uh, K as I do always and G, a K group. And I connect these two structures that I fixed by uh, a continuous homomorphism from S to G. Um, if this S turns to gamma at some point, uh, as it is in my note, uh, please let me know. Um, so, so this is a fixed data. Again, a, a data happening in the ergodic theoretical world, a data happening in the uh, algebraic geometric world, connecting morphism. And, and now I want, I mean, this is a fixed action, but also I want to, uh, to dis discuss actions of G, algebraic actions, and somehow uh, represent x, or the groupoid uh, s acting on uh, x uh, in this uh, algebraic world. So, and algebraic representation of uh, s on x, of this ergodic action, ah. Maybe I'll write it. Assume. Assume S on X is ergodic. I mean, this is not necessarily for the definition, but this is a typical assumption I will hold, I will take. Um, an algebraic representation of this ergodic action uh, with respect to Rho is consist of a, a k g variety v so something g act on it k morphically uh, and of course then i denote v the underline uh, the, the space of points on which i think with the uh, k topology so it's a a standard board space in particular uh, with G action that we discussed and studied. 
So th this is part of the varying data now, V. Uh, and uh, an S equivariant uh, map. So I put marks like here so to remind us that these are maps as discussed in the, in the previous talk. Uh, so I map from X to V from this Lebesgue space to this Borel space. So in fact, it is a class of map uh, phi, which I, I'm assuming to be equivalent. So I have the S action here, the G action here, and O in here, and I want this to be commutative. Uh, so this is what I abbreviate sometimes as an area. This is not part of the diagram. Uh, so this is a, a, the basic object, and uh, having this object, I want uh, morphisms uh, in the category of areas. So so in fact, if you uh, uh, you realize that the area is really a, a pair v. I should have written here bold face v, and of course, uh, implicitly there is the data of the g action on it, uh, and the map phi. Uh, and I assume I have another one, u and psi, or psi, uh, uh, is a k g map u, it's bold. Boldified uh, V to U. Usually I will not boldify, just for once, for the definition. Uh, v to U, uh, which is uh, S commutative. Uh, so I have x goes to v, goes to u, and let me call this one alpha. And I want a map alpha. And again, there is a distinction, and I, I will write to emphasize it in writing. There is a line here, left side, left side is uh, ergodic theory right side is algebraic geometry. The map alpha lives in the right side. Uh, this is, a, a, let me uh, and give it just a regular map or morphism. Let me emphasize it by a choice of terminology. So this is a morphism of varieties, alpha. And uh, okay, this line doesn't need to be here, but uh, you should have it in your mind. Uh, so this is a, a, a morphism between a representation. As usual, I mean, it's the same thing that we have, uh, uh, or imitation of the same thing that we have many times. Uh, in mathematics, uh, and uh, let me give you, I will give you some examples. Yes, please. As equivalent, because here I have, I mean, it is G, I mean, alpha should be G equivalent, uh, which is automatically if uh, the image uh, of S is a risky dense, but I didn't say anything about it. Uh, but uh, this should be, I mean, this should be a commutative diagram such that, such that, diagram is commutative, Bet better said this way. Um, let me give you uh, the very basic example that this uh, imitate. Uh, assumed, uh, consider the action of S on S mod T. So homogeneous action of S. Now, how can I map S mod T, um, S mod T, uh, 
uh, into V. Uh, we already discussed this in other examples. Uh, uh, we just take the orbit map of a T fixed point. So every map. Uh, is given by a pair. A G variety V and a T fixed point. Mm. In V. Right, and then uh, and then I get a map uh, by the orbit. By the orbit map based on that T fixed point. Uh, I want you to notice that, in fact, uh, if a point is uh, fixed under T, then it is fixed under the Zarisi closure of T. So in fact, uh, what we get, um, now I'll assume, Rho of t, yes. OK, so I was uh, just about to write uh, an assumption. Uh, now assume Rho is risky dense. By this I mean uh, that the image of S under Rho is risky dense. Uh, then, oh, actually this is not, a, not needed. Well, whatever. Uh, we get a map. Actually, I'm not using the risky density assumption. Uh, but if, if we have a TIF, a, a T bar fixed point, then we get a map from G mod rho T Z to V, right? I mean, the orbit map from, uh, of this point, of, of the point fixed by uh, the Zerisi closure of T, will give me uh, a map from this. So maybe let me call V0, this space. Maybe let me call it rho t. I can call it h0. So in fact, uh, I'm getting a map. We get a map. We get a, an area uh, from x, which is s mod t, to g mod h0 and for every uh, so let me call this maybe c0 phi0 for every uh, other phi to v we have a morphism I'll do it diagrammatically I have this one, I have another, and I just got alpha. Uh, in fact, I'm getting that this a unique such guy. And also, let me erase this. I didn't use it, I was confused. Now, this here is basically the definition of initial object in a category. Observe. G mod H0 is an initial object in the category of area of S mod T. So in a sense, well, H0 is a risky closure of uh, T. 
And what I'm saying here is basically I gave you a very fancy way to define the risk closure. Here. Uh, what now I'm about to, uh, to sell is the fact that whenever uh, the action of S on X is ergodic, we are always, we are all this time under this uh, example title of uh, homogeneous action of S on S mod T, right? Uh, I want to now say that this is general. Uh, there is a philosophy in ergodic theory uh, for many years, yes? No, I'm, I'm, I am given, I, I am given a, an algebraic representation V. If there is no fixed point, there is no algebraic representation. I mean, it is, it is given. I mean, there is a correspondence between Vs and fixed points and T fixed points inside them and algebraic representations of S mod T. Um, so, uh, yes, please. In this case, is the uh, inverse image of H zero T in S? Sorry. The inverse image of H, uh, H not in uh, S, is it equal to T? Yes. Okay. Um, <coughs> no, sorry. Uh, not necessarily. May maybe maybe uh, uh, it could be that uh, the the inverse image of H0 under, uh, under the, the map rho will be bigger than, uh, than T. We, we will see examples. Uh, H0 is defined to be the risk closure of the image of T under the given map rho. Uh, so maybe I'll now uh, state a theorem and then say something. This is a very, very basic. Uh, theorem in, in this business. So now let me emphasize, I'm assuming S on X is uh, ergodic. And this is fixed. In fact, everything that appears here is fixed. I'm just emphasizing. Uh, then there exists an initial but now I'm not longer under the uh, example title, right? I mean, this is general. Uh, there exists an initial object in the category of areas associated with all. So uh, again, what I started saying earlier, uh, there is a philosophy uh, called uh, uh, philosophy of virtual groups. Whenever I have a transitive action like there, uh, it is given by a subgroup defined up to conjugacy, T. I mean, the action of S on S mod T is given by T. Uh, and of course, it is ergodic, it is uh, homogeneous. Now I'm assuming having an ergodic action which is not necessarily homogeneous. I think of it, I may think of it, as some sort of a generalization of a subgroup in the world of locally compact second countable groups. So this is sometimes called a virtual subgroup. This is an old terminology, I think, due to Mackey, that people not use much, but it's useful to have it in mind. And as we observed before in the homogeneous setting, uh, the initial object that we had is just the Zarisi closure of a subgroup. Now I, cl I claim that there exists a, such a generalization of this fact. There is an initial object always, and I will explain, you will see that it is some G mod H0 always, and this H0 could be, could be thought, maybe I'll, I'll add this as a part of the theorem, uh, uh, of the form, maybe. X to G mod H0, phi zero. So uh, the initial object will be a coset space of G. And the stabilizing group defined, again, up to conjugacy, could be thought of as there's a risky closure of uh, the virtual group defining X. We've seen uh, last time, I mean, two days ago, that uh, in algebraic geometry, in action of algebraic groups and algebraic varieties, there is no interesting ergodic theory. Ergodic theory is just 
uh, ergodic actions are just homogeneous. They're just uh, coset spaces. So there are no virtual subgroups. Whenever I have a virtual subgroup there, I mean, the Zarisi closure of it is a, is a true group. And basically, this is what this theorem is, is, is telling us. Okay? So now, uh, if there are no questions, I will prove this theorem. Okay. Yes, uh, the map phi is, where is the definition? Uh, let me emphasize. This is a Borel map, almost ever defined. So I consider V with the Borel structure defined uh, up to equivalence of almost everywhere. Uh, equality of maps. So, uh, yeah, this is, thank you for making me cl clarifying it. Uh, now I, I will prove this theorem. And basically you're familiar with this line of thought that I'm about to present. And I'm using the same tricks over and over again. Uh, I will look. So I'm looking for such a thing. Uh, I will look at. Uh, I will look on all options. So I will consider the, the space of all age, uh, k-algebraic subgroup of G. Uh, uh, such that there exists an area from x to g mod h. All, all candidates are sitting here. Uh, this is a non-empty collection, as usual, because g itself is here. Uh, I always have the one-point space and the trivial map, the constant map, into it. So this is a non-empty collection. I can, uh, again, uh, take a minimal element, h0. And along with this mini minimal element, I will make a choice of uh, phi0. I mean, here in defining the collection, I just wanted the existence of such. Now I'm choosing one. And as we've seen before in different contexts, this minimal element will actually be a least element, or at least up to conjugacy. Uh, and in a certain sense, uh, this will be uh, also canonical. Uh, but uh, this is in a particular sense that uh, uh, is somewhat less trivial than uh, appears a priori. Uh, so now uh, we'll show that this is uh, an initial object. By the way, sorry for stopping in the middle of the proof, but uh, I, I want to remind you, given a category, initial object in a category is not uniquely defined. Two initial objects uh, are naturally isomorphic in a unique way, uh, and this is very, very important. But in many cat categories that we are used to, there, really we have just one canonical initial object. This is not the case here. We made some choices, and, and this will become very, very useful in the future. So I'm already uh, emphasizing this fact. OK, but uh, I should not stop in the middle of the proof and discuss things. I should uh, prove this. Uh, so for this, uh, we consider uh, another uh, representation, uh, x to v. Sorry, uh, by use, now I'm confused about. <laughs> the Yanity property. 
No, 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 no. Okay, so let me emphasize this set here is a set of subgroups. Uh, this existence of a map is, is, is a property of the subgroups. Is, uh, I mean, it's a way for me to distinguish some subgroups among others. And just take, I'm focusing on, on the, I mean, this is not a part of the uh, data I'm choosing a minimal object over. This is a very important question. Uh, thank you for asking it. I'm just defining the, the collection of subgroups using it. And on the collection of subgroups, I have this notoriety. And I can choose a minimal object. But once I did uh, choose it, I can, I know the existence of such a thing, and I further uh, choose uh, this guy. Okay, arbitrarily of the many possibly uh, options I have. Okay, and I claim that actually, uh, and, and, and I, I, uh, I mentioned it before, uh, this is not canonical, but any choice uh, will give me uh, an initial object that we will see. Okay, is this uh, clarify? Uh, yeah, but you have to uh, accept life. We make choices. Uh, <laughs> in fact, uh, the, the, um, I mean, here you, you choose from, from uh, possibly a, a, a big set, but manageable in, in a certain way. I mean, we'll, we'll see it in the future. But uh, okay, so now I'm considering another one, uh, and uh, I will sketch a diagram that I hope uh, will convince us all that. Uh, uh, I can do things. Uh, so now I'm about to look at a representation, various representation of x. I will not write x in the picture, I will just write the spaces I'm representing to. So uh, I was representing uh, 2v, but actually I can take uh, the diagonal representation into g times, now I'm, I'm taking now to this, I take phi times phi zero in here. Okay, I will not write it, uh, not to spoil the diagram. Um, and I will have the projection to V. So this will be the map phi in here. And of course, I will have the projection uh, to G mod H zero. And so I have the map from X to this one. But now uh, I recall, maybe I should have stated as a, as a lemma, uh, but uh, I mean, this is, a, now I'm about to use ergodicity. And this is the only place I'm about to use ergodicity. This is very important. The image of X inside this variety occupies just one single orbit. So there is uh, an orbit here g mod h1 uh, that uh, now I will get some psi map to, right? Uh, again, this is ergodicity. This follows from the discussion we had later. So in particular, now I'm getting this map, okay? Now, how come I, I get a map from D, g mod h1 to g mod uh, h0? Uh, this, from this, I'm getting that H1 is included in H0 uh, up to conjugacy, right? I mean, if I have, this is a G map. This is a G map, right? I mean, all, all the maps over here are morphisms of varieties, G morphism of varieties. So this is a G map between uh, homogeneous G spaces and I'm forced to have uh, uh, inclusions of uh, stabilizers. Um, but now this psi over here uh, is uh, an area that uh, I got out of this picture. Uh, and H0 was supposed to be minimal object uh, in this uh, collection. Uh, so by minimality, of H0, I have that H0, H1 equals H0. And this map over here is actually uh, an isomorphism. And from this, I can take the map to V. 
So from G mod H0, I can climb up here and, go, and end up here. So uh, I explained why I have such, I mean, remember, this was in another discussion, but this, was, this diagram represents what an initial object is. Uh, I just showed that from G mod H0, I always have a map to V for an arbitrary V. And in fact, uh, this map is unique. I, I leave this uh, as, as an easy exercise, uh, but everything here is uh, G maps and uh, transitivity tells you. Uh, so we got a map from G mod H0 to uh, V, which I maybe I, sh I should call alpha, uh, which is unique. And, and, and this is the end of the proof. So uh, we, we prove this uh, claim. And as I said, this is, this is an important one. I, here, I didn't use the risky density or anything. The only thing, the only real assumption I had is ergodicity. And it was used in choosing this thing here. And uh, so this is an important assumption. Uh, but it, it, everything here, here is rather cheap. Uh, now I want to, uh, to give some examples. I'll use this. Because the, this discussion is somewhat mysterious. Okay? Uh, I mean, we have the first exa example, S, S mod t, uh, which I already discussed uh, in detail. So it, then we understand everything, and this is the motivating example. Uh, maybe I, I'll say it if anyone uh, knows the notion, some of us do know the notion of uh, uh, the risky hull of a co cycle that uh, uh, Zimmer was uh, using in his uh, theory of co cycles. I'm not sure, maybe Mackie was using before. Uh, then all these terms are uh, inspired by, uh, by this uh, terminology. And if you think about ideas, there is nothing but these old ideas. But it's ca somehow casted in, 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 a, in a different uh, language, which is, uh, which is very useful, I find. Um, OK, so this is one example. Um, another example, assume s on x is PMP. Probability measure preserving. Uh, assume further that G uh, is case simple. So no normal subgroup, no quotients. Uh, and rho to G unbounded. Unbounded means that the image is not contained in a compact subgroup. <clears throat> then uh, the initial object, the initial object is trivial. So any rep of x is essentially constant. Essentially constant, and the image uh, is image is G fixed. To say that the uh, initial object is trivial is to say that uh, no, I mean, there are no representation which are non constant. And uh, this follows, uh, I will not write it down, but it follows from the classification of uh, measures of of PMP measures uh, on algebraic variety that we discussed earlier, that we discussed last time. Uh, we remember, recall what I remember, we remember that uh, whenever I have an S invariant, that, that was the, the statement I made at the last minutes of uh, of the lecture, lecture two days ago, any S invariant measure, I think I used gamma back then, uh, every S invariant measure is uh, coming from a, a pre-compact image 
of S in a quotient of G by some group N0. Remember, here I'm assuming there is no, uh, N0 is trivial, no uh, non-compact. Sorry, I should have written this. Uh, I'm assuming N0 is trivial, so no compact quotient. Oh, I guess this is, <laughs> it follows from un unbounded. I, I'm assuming that uh, S as a subgroup of G, or the image in G is unbounded, uh, so there are, there are no, uh, uh, no possible uh, non-trivial images of X. Um, maybe on the same vein, assume S on X is PMP uh, and weakly mixing. So it satisfies properties one, two, three, four that uh, we had before. Now, maybe without this uh, extra assumption of uh, simplicity and unboundedness, then again, IO is trivial. Again, it follows from the same proof, uh, and the fact that uh, part of definition of uh, one of the equivalent definition of weekly mixing is that we don't have uh, compact factors. Nevertheless, uh, let, let me, I, I want to give you uh, to sketch very briefly uh, another proof of this fact. So X weakly mixing and assume I have a map X to V. X is P and P. Remember that uh, if X is uh, P and P and weakly mixing that X times Y is also ergodic. X times X is ergodic. But now I can take X times X as Y, so X times X times X is also ergodic. So X to the, X to the N is always ergodic. So I can look at the map from X to N to V to the N. Ah, let me assume, assume image I assume some dominance. Image is E-dense. So I'm taking the support of the image and there's a risky closure and restrict, instead of taking V, I, I will take just that image as my target. So uh, if this is the case, then image here is E-dense. But because this is a godic, I know that there is some G mod H here that uh, takes this. And I get that uh, the dimension of V to the N is smaller than the dimension of G mod H, which is definitely smaller dimension of G. Now this is fixed, but this goes for every N. Uh, so, I guess this is, if you want, n times dimension of v, uh, so dimension of v is zero. So this is just a finite set. And this weakly mixing thing as I, I already told you that it doesn't have any countable quotient. So it definitely ca cannot have a, a finite quotient unless this is just a triviality, that, that just a one point. So this is just a sketch, uh, alternative sketch uh, for the following fact. Uh, weakly mixing actions, PMP ones, uh, are trivial. Are trivial from the point, I cannot represent it, represent them, uh, this ergodic, strongly ergodic things inside the algebraic geometric, algebra geometric world. A question about that? Okay. Uh, another example in this list which I like a lot is something that we proved with Alex Fuhrman, Gorodnik and Weiss. Uh, if gamma is a lattice in G, 
maybe I'll state it as a, as a theorem elsewhere. I'll give more respect to this example. Uh, OK, usually there is no much I can tell about uh, those initial objects that uh, we have by the theorem I just erased. Uh, sometimes we do, and this is when uh, we have uh, lattices in uh, classical Lie groups. So now G, say, uh, K simple non compact. Gamma inside G, a lattice. I told you always that there is a, the ergodic theoretical sides and the algebraic geometric side. Now I'm about to confuse the two. I'm about to uh, put some algebraic data over here. Um, H inside G, closed, not necessarily algebraic, uh, closed, non compact. Subgroup. And I want to consider the gamma action on G mod H. And that will be my X. Oh, let's say, let's say it is algebraic. K algebraic just to avoid taking the risk closure in a minute. Uh, so this is, this is a variety by itself, but now I want to consider it as my x. But I don't take it as a g space. This was the example that we discussed before uh, stating the theorem about initial object. I'm taking it as a gamma space. And I say, this doesn't matter much. And uh, then, then the identity map x uh, to uh, G mod H is the initial object. I mean, this would be clear if I was discussing this space as a G space. And now I claim that this holds ah, uh, for, of course, rho being the inclusion of gamma inside G. Let, let me, I, I will uh, sketch the proof for this. Let me just illustrate. Uh, uh, let me give you an example uh, which I like. Every Borel map, uh, Rn to Rn. Which commutes with SLNZ is an homotopy. So it's a, multi it's a scalar multiplication. If I give you Rn and I, I take a Borel map that commutes with all matrices application of all matrices, or all invertible matrices, or all SLN matrices, it is very easy to see that these are just matrix, uh, co uh, scalar multiplication. I claim that it is enough to take this one. And this is an easy application of this formalism and, and, and this theorem. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm trying to say that this thing here has a non-entirely uh, trivial context, content. Uh, so let me uh, sketch the proof of this claim. So I'm taking G mod H and I have a map to V. And this is a gamma map. Gamma map. Um, let's call it phi. So I can take the projection natural map G to G mod H and consider this one. So let's, let me call this big phi. 
The thing is that, uh, okay, I, have, I, I want to discuss such maps and to say something about those. Gamma maps from G mod H to V, where V is a G space. So this map is gamma equivariant and age invariant on G. I want to say that by a simple trick, I can reverse the duality that once I uh, mentioned earlier, I can reverse the role or invert the role of gamma and age. This is what I'm about to do now. Uh, so I, I define now uh, psi from G to V, not phi, but psi, by taking, just I wrote it so I get, will not get confused, uh, I'll take G inverse of phi of G. Check psi is uh, gamma invariant on the right and age equivariant for the left action of age on G. So, uh, so actually, I'm getting a map from G mod gamma uh, uh, here, age map. So this is just an exercise uh, with uh, group symbolism. But now we have age on G mod gamma. And this is the PMP action. And I already told you, told you this is a weekly mixing. PMP action. So this map is actually constant. If you wish, I was just using this example. Because I actually got a representation of this space into V, an age representation. Uh, so this is, so I mean, this is an age representation of this ergodic action into V. And it must uh, end up in a fixed point. Uh, is constant, so this means that uh, little v, so uh, g inverse phi g uh, is v, and this means that phi g is g v for every uh, g in g, and basically this, is, this says that uh, the map phi it follows that phi is G, is a G map. So it's actually, a, the original map was a G map, and the image here is a fixed point, and, a, and you can read out of it that, uh, in fact, this map is the famous map alpha that you can see here, uh, and everything is fine. Uh, okay, I'm, I was brief here because this is uh, not, my main interest, but this is just uh, to illustrate that at sometimes we can say what the initial objects are, but in general, uh, this, this is a mystery. And um, I'll answer in a minute, but my next goal before uh, releasing you uh, for lunch uh, is to say that sometimes we do have some control. And uh, yes, please. In the last time on the launch, it's like gamma is discrete. I use the fact that, uh, on, uh, not discreteness really, I use the fact that this is PMP. Uh, yes. But, okay, I mean, if you ask, uh, under this assumption, there are no, uh, I mean, every uh, subgroup of finite core volume is already discrete. So, uh, yes, but uh, it doesn't matter so much. Um, okay. What I said so far. I said that uh, in the category of algebraic representation of ergodic actions, they are initial object, and these guys are useful. Uh, I said 
that uh, sometimes, and, and under strong ergodicity assumptions, like weekly mixing PMP, they become trivial. And in fact, this is the case most of the time. Very rarely I can say something positive, like in this uh, statement over here, and say exactly what are the initial objects. But now I'm about uh, to tell you that uh, sometimes I can argue uh, for the existence of non-trivial uh, initial object without knowing what it is. And this is a very, very important theorem uh, in this business, or proposition, because I, uh, this is how it appears in my notes. Uh, exist initial object, that, the title. Assume this is amenable and also metrically ergodic. This is the assumption that I emphasized, uh, a pair of assumptions that I emphasized previously. Uh, and assume uh, G is K simple. And rho unbounded. So when I'm, I'm in a particular uh, setting, then there exists an initial object x to g mod h, g, uh, and I mean the existence we already know. But the, the important fact is that age is a proper subgroup. So it's non-trivial. Amenability, basically, uh, together with uh, metric godicity, by, by, uh, buys us non-triviality of representation into algebraic varieties. So this is a, a very transcendental assumption, amenability, or amenability in ME. Uh, and somehow it gives us uh, this uh, miracle uh, that uh, we will see later uh, is very useful for further uh, elaborations. And uh, just this is the end, this is the starter of an engine that we will uh, build that is quite powerful. And, and this is, and this theorem in my mind is very mysterious because this is the only place uh, in a sense where uh, transcendental, transcendental assumptions on the ergodic actions come to play. Uh, okay, now uh, in the remaining time I will give you the proof or sketch the proof. So amenability, now, now G is very classical, it's a, uh, it's a sim simply group or simple K-algebraic group. Uh, so I can look at G mod P and P is a parabolic. So this is a compact space. And I can look at the probability measures on this uh, compact space. And this is again, this is a compact convex set on which G acts. And since G acts, and we have a map S to G, uh, then S acts, and amenability gives me uh, an S map. So this is not an algebraic representation, but it's almost, it's a, it's a representation in a space which resembles algebraic geometry somewhat. Uh, and I told you that the action on this space uh, is, is nice. Orbits are locally closed. G orbits are locally closed, not S orbits. S orbits I know nothing. But G orbits are locally closed, so uh, I can find uh, G mod H in here. Let me call it H1 because this is not the H I'm looking for, such that this map factors via. This is by ergodicity, of course, plus locally closed, locally closed orbits. For this action, for the G action here. Um, now, H1 is not necessarily algebraic group, but it's fairly close to B1. Uh, H1, we know that uh, it has it satisfies such a long, long exact sequence, 
So it has h0, where this is algebraic. Uh, normal sub of H1, and, uh, and the quotient is co-compact. Quotient is co I mean, quotient is co-compact. Uh, we discussed what is the structure of stabilizers of measures uh, on, on algebraic varieties, right? We, we had this. Uh, so H1 is not algebraic, but H0 is algebraic. And now uh, we have various uh, options, uh, algebraic, and in fact, uh, maybe I'll say something. This is uh, the fixator of the support of the measure mu. Uh, H1 is the stabilizer of a measure mu. Okay, now uh, there are various options. Maybe H1 is trivial. Uh, but then H1, I claim this is not the case because then H1 is compact. And this map here, and we get a map x to g mod k. Uh, and this by me is contradicted. Contradiction. So h0 is not trivial. I mean, here, this is the only use of ME, metric layer Godic, because this is a metric space. Uh, ah, no, moreover, it's not only ME. This is a metric space, so what I actually get by ME is that the map is, uh, is constant, and this constant is S invariant, and this means that S is contained in a conjugation of K. So here I also use the assumption that unbounded. Bounded. That rho is unbounded. So these two assumptions were used here. Um, so now uh, H is not E and also it is not G itself, right? Uh, okay, this I didn't say. Uh, let me put it here. That's very important and I forgot to say it. H cannot be G itself. If H was G itself, then mu is, uh, or maybe I'll, I'll, uh, H0 of, uh, is contained the fixator of the support of mu, so H0 uh, uh, is contained in P up to conjugation, right? I mean, it's, in particular, it fixes a point. So it is, it, in particular, it cannot be G. G cannot uh, stabilize a, a measure, so H0 not normal. Now I'm using the fact that I gave that uh, G is K-simple. Again, this is not a general uh, tautological statement. I'm using simplicity here. Um, so I can, this means that H1 is contained in the normalizer of H0. Let's call it N, which is, strict subgroup of G. Now, H1 is not algebraic necessarily, but H0 is, so this is algebraic. And let me uh, finish the line here. So I got 
x to g mod h1, and h1 is contained in n, so I'm getting g mod n over here, and this is, maybe I should have called it h, because this, oh no, I, I'll, I'll keep it n. Uh, so this is a non-trivial area. OK? Now, I'm not claiming that this is the initial object. The initial object is some subgroup H, which is contained in N, uh, but necessarily uh, non-trivial. N itself is non-trivial. So uh, this is it. So let me, let me uh, summarize, because uh, I made many, many proofs and uh, things get complicated. But what are the essentials? The, the, the first lecture today was about some ergodic theoretical stuff. It was uh, very standard. But then we defined what an area is, algebraic representation of ergodic actions, action. And we, we learned that, as in the homogeneous case, we can always have some sort of a zerisic closure of uh, an ergodic action in the algebraic world. So an initial object in the category of, repre of such representations. And this is of the form g mod h0. And in many classical cases, there is no such theory. No invariant, essentially no invariant measures, no PMP measures on algebraic representation, uh, alge for algebraic actions. So for x, which is PMP, maybe with assumptions, uh, but really no non-trivial algebraic representation. Every algebraic representation is fixed. And this is very important. But the theory is not empty because under this very strong assumption of amenability and ME, we do have algebraic representations. So we do have something to hold on to, even though we don't know what it is. I mean, this, is, th this proof that I gave is abstract. It doesn't tell us what are the results. But there exists something. And moreover, any group, I told you, has such an action, amenable and ME. So something is, uh, is going on, and uh, we will see how to use it. So next week, I will explain some functoriality properties of this construction of initial object, so how it uh, preserves symmetries. This will be complete. From now on, everything more or less is completely tautological. It's just playing with the tools we already uh, studied. So next week, my lectures, we will actually get some result, and I will prove for you super rigidity in various contexts. Uh, but things will be very, very formal given the tools that we already uh, made. So no hard proofs, I promise. So uh, enjoy your lunch. <laughs>